game is it does have a lot of pretty crazy stuff in it, but I think a lot of it comes from either subverting sort of expected video game tropes, like everybody who's worked on the game. Like I think when you pick up the game, you're like, well, this is a game made by gamers because it's just full of all these things that gamers really tend to like, you know, leveling up and loot and all this strategy and all this kind of stuff. Um, but that's also sort of bled into the story and, and, and there's a lot of stuff that's very clearly trying to sort of buck against video game cliches. You know, we have a lot of female characters that are uh, cool or funny or badass first and n either sexualized second or just never sexualized period. They, 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 their purpose as characters is to be interesting inherently and they're not eye candy or you're not supposed to rescue them. Like we have Ellie who's a really overweight female character who is a just a super badass, super hopefully super funny um, supporting character and she's not there to be ogled or to laugh at or anything like that, you know, playing against sort of the way that a lot of females tend to be represented. We have, uh, you know, a, a lot of missions that are the opposite of what you would expect to see in a big war in a big epic RPG like we've talked uh, previously about Tiny Tina's missions and you know instead of like saving the world and rescuing all the people from all the things in the side quest you're like helping a little girl have a tea party except in a weird twisted kind of torture filled kind of way um, a lot of it's just sort of playing around with tropes and seeing like what kind of things have we just not seen in video games before and, and hopefully there's a lot of stuff that'll surprise people um, yeah yeah, it, well, it's basically I'll write you know the scripts and everything like that, and we'll pass it by design and be like, okay, this is what we want to do for these quests, and we know for sure that we want to spend the time to concept this girl out and get her in the game and stuff like that. And then basically we'll get a bunch of just random sort of concept drawings, just different experiments to see which directions we can go, and then I sort of talk with the art team and sort of point at ones that I like, and and we know we sort of try to come to a consensus on, on which are most appealing to us. Yeah, there, we had a lot of old Tina concepts that were just nuts. Like she was in a crazy bunny suit that was just covered completely in blood, and she was always holding a knife. There were some where she looked like Alice in Wonderland, but like covered in like gore and all that kind of stuff. And we landed in a pretty cool place, I think, where she's got you know the psycho mask, but on her head, like implying like maybe her parents were psychos or she kills psychos and wears their stuff just for fun like it, I think I think it, it's really cool my personal favorite character would probably be uh, handsome Jack just because he he was what I always want I always wanted to write a really central villain and have him be all throughout the narrative and have him be a kind of unconventional villain in the way that he behaves because he's he's a really immature villain like he just makes fun of you all the time he's sort of childish he's like a kid who's you know magnifying ants with a uh, he's burning ants with a magnifying glass and you're the ant essentially and he has a lot of fun being a bad guy and i, I really have a lot of fun just writing a, a, a really dickish kind of character who's just enjoying screwing with you this is handsome jack your hero we all know that ever since I took over your armpit of a planet, well, I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> Suffice it to say, Vault Hunters, I'm gonna kill you. You wanna prove me wrong? You wanna stop the greatness that is Handsome Jack? Well, come and get me. It's actually, you know, border, like you said, Borderlands is kind of a, a wacky universe, but a big part of writing it was figuring out, okay, what are the edges of that universe? Like, because because I think there is a, a line that it will get too silly and won't feel like Borderlands, you know? Um, and so it was finding out how far can we go, how wacky can we be? And the sort of our, our, our touchstone narratively was always, if we're gonna be wacky, if we're gonna be funny and over the top, make sure that that, that wackiness is sort of tempered by something that's either dark maybe, or, or a little bit harsh, or a little bit more serious and down to earth. So, you know, like Tina's funny and wacky, but her backstory is actually kind of sad. And like Scooter's joking about haha -ha and screwing with your mom and stuff like that, but he's actually like a straight up murderer. Like in the first game, he just murders a guy just for having sex with his mom. He's like, he's not a good person, uh, even though he may make you laugh, that kind of thing. We come out September 18th in, the, in North America and 21st internationally. And uh, our platforms are Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Thank you.